Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Motivate Mix Interviews brought to you by Motivate Magazine, which is a global online publication with an international readership. So for those of you who are new here today, let me be the first to give you a hearty welcome. And for our return viewers, it's good to have you back. My name is Cadian Sterling, known as the Divorce and Separation Coach and Mentor for Women, and um, I'll be representing Motivate Magazine today. Hi, so we're joined here today by Jacqueline Rogerson, who's a um, woman positivity and well-being coach and author of two inspirational self-help books and co-author of a third uh, uh, whose holistic approach is helping women flip the script in order to serve themselves and take that well-deserved first step towards self-care. Jacqueline, welcome. Hi, Katie, and it's great to be on here with you today. Thank I'm really you looking so forward to this chat. much. Yeah, me too. It's really, really good to have you here. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm actually getting ready to go away for a few days, so I'm really ready. I'm like just tying up loose ends today, which is it's just nice. It's that feeling of getting ready for holiday, which I think we've all forgotten about. <laughs> Somewhere in the sun? Um, on the coast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just really. yeah, just across. I'm in the Midlands, so we couldn't be further from the coast, really. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> hopefully you get a bit of sun then, because um, the weather's yeah, like yeah, time, fingers it? crossed, definitely. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so now we're here to discuss the piece you wrote for the eighth edition of Motivate Magazine, and it's titled "In the Pursuit of Happiness." Right. But That's right. Yeah. Dive right into that. Would you mind yep. a minute just to get to know you just a teeny little bit better? Yep. Absolutely. Okay, brilliant, fantastic, fantastic. Um, just, yeah, for those of us uh, who know you will know that it's not been the easiest of journey um, for you. Would you mind sharing with us in your own words how you came about being a wellbeing um, coach and author, please? Absolutely. So um, I've always been one of those people who uh, people have come to for advice. I was the agony aunt at school. I was somebody that teachers used to ask for help when I was younger. And then Basically, from the age of 16, I um, went through or survived, however you want to call it, um, experience after experience of life affirming stuff from um, a teen pregnancy to losing my son to incredibly difficult personal relationships um, and having a son with a disability and life just kept throwing this stuff at me and I kept finding a way to come back <laughs> and um, it's just kind of all I've ever known so I've learned to be incredibly resilient and found over those years many different ways to um, really make sure that I am well in myself and it was really a few years ago so I think five years ago now that I was going through one of these really challenging times in my life and I had come to the end of the road. I just didn't know how on earth I was going to keep going. And I had decided in my wisdom to hire a coach that I'd connected with. And her advice to me was actually, if you learn to put yourself higher up the list, other things will fall into place. And for me, that didn't really make any sense in this moment in time. It was just, it couldn't have sounded more alien, to be quite honest. Um, but I'd paid her for, you know, her help. So I took her advice, did what she said. And um, as things evolved, life very, very slowly but surely kind of settled down and things improved. And I'm now at a point in my life where I have completely turned all of those things around from the relationships between my children to the situation with um, my now ex-husband. You know, there's been a lot of real hardcore, difficult stuff. And I know that what I have learned is something that you can't really teach in a traditional sort of way. It's more about the experience and that by sharing that experience with other women, I can help them to find ways to actually turn things around so that in themselves they feel stronger and more steadfast and able 
able to deal with things and look forward to life again. Well, so it sounds like you just, you went through a lot. And I mean, obviously that's, that's a lot that you crammed into, <laughs> crammed into. I just, I don't know how I just that one. Yeah. yeah, but you know, it kind of, with every, every trial and tribulation that you mentioned, it kind of landed a bit more and more and more. And you spoke about it's, the experience is something that you have to, you know, your clients have to experience it. You can't just teach it. So I know that mm. you have, um, a unique approach to your coaching style called the heartfelt approach. Would you mind telling us what the beautiful acronym stand for, please? Thank you. I, I do love this. And um, it was one of those things that came to me in a flash and I thought, I've got something here I've got to work with. So what the heartfelt approach stands for is the heart, which encompasses um, kind of the beginning bit of your journey as you go through different stages and come to somewhere that feels really good. So you honour where you're at and you really kind of acknowledge and appreciate that you've already been through something in some way to get to where you are and you know now that it's time for you. So you then embrace what that's all about, what that means for you, which is that you um, find ways to actually feel good about the fact that you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. So you really take that on. Um, and that is one of the biggest things, because I think the whole mum guilt or survivor guilt or whatever kind of guilt you might be feeling about putting you above other things is something that stops a lot of women. And I'm feeling quite emotional just talking about it. I really am. Um, so then you come to the A, which is alignment. And that can come in many different ways. But what alignment basically is, is when everything arrives in a place where it fits perfectly with you and who you want to be and who you choose to be so that you can be a completely honest authentic version of yourself and not constantly ticking boxes for what you think you're supposed to be so you're a lot more honest with what you want from your life mm -hmm. and then the r is to realize so you then start to see things happening falling into place in a way that you think this is what it's all been about, actually. So you're realizing that the things that you've been doing to get to this are completely the right thing. And so that as a result of that, you get T, which is where you thrive. And um, there really are so many different things that you can do to start putting these things in motion. But the thrive part is really where you're actually living and you know, waking up excited for the day ahead. You're not kind of constantly on the hamster wheel of do this, do this, yeah. go there, be there, you know, really kind of not doing any of that stuff anymore. You're in a place where the things that you are doing are the things that bring you fulfillment, that help you to feel like you're living a life with your purpose rather than just for, um, because you happen to be in the world and you've got to get on with it <laughs> yeah 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 and that's so that's so true and I think a lot of us could resonate with you just get up and go especially if you are a mom um I have the saying where it's like you know <laughs> a lady doesn't do anything um part-time everything we do appears to be full-time I mean somebody out there may correct me of that but it, or it at least feels like everything that we do is um full-time so when you're you know when you work with your clients how do they feel once they come through the other end of this um heartfelt approach so there's there's a real sense that they've got their life back yeah and that they kind of now because they've got the experience of being in that place where they felt like christ i can't do this anymore yeah. that they are now really thankful and they know that it's been all really positive that they've had to make. You know, sometimes you have to make decisions and sometimes it's around things like your boundaries and, um, you know, being a yes person all the time and that sort of stuff. And they feel a massive sense of relief that actually, you know, they're not doing that anymore and they're able to live life to the full in a way that feels good for them and that that's absolutely 
fully, you know, it's acceptable to, to have that. It's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a positive thing. It's not a selfish thing. And it's that that kind of, that's the bit that trips people up is thinking that when they do something for themselves, they're being selfish. And it's, it's, yeah. they come to that understanding that actually, no, because, you know, this is my life and I can, I can improve my life, but I can also bring out a lot more for other people. So, you know, other people's lives as a result will benefit from them being a lot more honest and open version of themselves. Yeah, sort of like topping your own cup up and then the overflow sort of um, affects everybody else positively. Effect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I can imagine that um, once someone's going through that process, having been years of neglecting themselves somewhat, that yeah. may be the most difficult thing for them is to actually say, actually, no, I deserve this. And putting me first is actually helping those who I who I love my nearest and dearest so I guess that may be a bit tricky at times have you had that much yeah I think I I think that is the thing is you know there, there's a lot of soul searching that goes on um, and it comes down to their level of self-worth really from the beginning so that tends to be where we start that's why it tends to be about self-care and you know spending that bit of time understanding just what they need and how they can look at things from a slightly different perspective because yeah. they've been so used to looking at how they can keep everybody else happy yeah yeah I can I can see that um thank you so much for sharing that was actually quite detailed as, as well so you can obviously <laughs> see you can obviously see that this is something you're really passionate about and that comes through that comes through to me and I know it will come through to those who are watching um this video so it's such a positive approach which leads us nicely into our main topic of discussion today which is your article which you wrote yeah. for motivate magazine titled in the pursuit of happiness right so yeah. you can already tell by the title that it's going to be a positive piece and although you know you allude towards this earlier can you just tell us the inspiration behind the article please so i feel that um a lot of people forget how to be happy yeah and that what they tend to do is they are well they are so caught up in the doing and the you know um list ticking and all of the things that come in life that actually taking a moment to ask themselves is this making me happy just doesn't happen there's no time for it and the thing is when you actually spend that bit of time connecting with activities with um being around the kind of people that make you happy um other stuff just follows naturally and by just spending a little bit of time kind of almost quietly asking, you know, what can I do that's going to create a positive feel? You find things that pop up that you perhaps hadn't expected that tick that box mm. to help you make happier, healthier choices. Mm. And by being happier in yourself, again that's that ripple effect thing it you know it moves out to the people around you so that because I mean if you if you think about it so when you're around somebody who's quite negative yeah it can make you feel quite negative <laughs> yeah. even if you're not a negative person even if you're the most positive person on the planet very true if you're around somebody who kind of drops that mood it can start to make you think slightly less positive thoughts and that can be a really hard cycle to get out of so one of the things about the article when I wrote it was that it was all about spending that time engaging with the things that pick you back up again mm. and just searching for those even in you know the smallest little ways for me <laughs> this is this is going to sound silly but I totally am fine with that one of my favorite things to do for many years including when I used to do the school run so I did 21 years of school runs which is a lot yeah, of school a lot of time. yeah and 
sometimes they'd be a mile and a half. And then as we moved closer to the school, they weren't too far. I love skipping to school to go and pick up my son. Wow. Right? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Do you know what? I forget about these things, but it's actually recently I've been on a bit of a fitness program thing and they get you to do something to kind of as a warm up. So you walk around the room, then you gently jog or another moving activity. And so I've started skipping. I love to skip. <laughs> and it's just a, it, it just connects you with the child in you because, you know, it's something that we perhaps used yeah. to do in playgrounds and things like that. And I know, and, and I can remember moments where I would, you know, I live on a busy main road. I would be skipping down the road and I'm sure, I'm sure that there were people driving past me thinking, look at that crazy 30 something <laughs> skipping down the road. But I know that there would also have been other people thinking, she looks happy, you know, and it's just, it's just that thing. You know, when you like, for example, if you're walking down the street and you walk past somebody and they're just smiling, you have no idea what they're smiling about. Yeah, yeah. Just a lovely, like, that's really nice. Yeah. And it just makes you feel good. And then probably that person smiling gets you smiling a little bit. Yeah. So those kind of things, you know, we're all so busy nowadays looking down at screens. Yes. Or at not necessarily looking at what's going on around us that we miss even the little tiny things. So a lot around what I wrote in the article was to do with appreciating those those moments that if you blink, you know, they'll pass you by and, and you'll just carry on doing whatever it was you were doing and not appreciate, you know, for yeah. example, somebody skipping down the road or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I wasn't expecting that. Honestly, I wasn't. I thought you were going to say you blast the radio full volume yeah. and sing along. That's but another one I love to do. Yeah, that's another one. <laughs> well, I just wanted to touch on something that you said, actually, it was that, you know, um, people should find the time to sit down and ask themselves, are they happy? Are they happy with things that are going on? Uh-huh. And, yeah. you know, a, a lot of people might say, well, I don't have the time to do that. But I just wanted to, to ask you again, in your opinion, is mm-hmm. it because they don't have time or because they're afraid of the answers they might find? Because I can imagine if you're not happy in something let's just say your relationship that you've been in for 15 years or a job that you you know you thought were your dream job and you're making a lot of money and you're not happy those may not be answers that you really want to sit down and and pick at right you're right it's a fear thing and I don't necessarily think that's always the case but I think it becomes a habitual thing to not have that time that it then just becomes a story. So that is there where we come back to the whole flipping the script thing. If you're telling yourself all the time, I don't have time for that, whatever it is, you're never going to have the time and you're never going to make that time. And usually what happens quite a lot of the time in the women that I work with, they'll have undergone some kind of life change. So whether it might be that they're at the sort of age where their children have left home or they might have had a career change or they might have had a relationship end. And all of a sudden they've had like this moment where they've thought, oh, now what? Mm. Who am I now? Mm. What, what, what can I, what can I, what happens to my life now? What's, what's Mm. it about? What's it for? Who's it for? And actually it's, it, can be for them but they need to have that moment and that kind of conversation with themselves and I think that a lot of that happens exactly like you just said if they don't have that time it's probably because they don't want to find that time yeah they're running away from something that's making them think I I can't figure that out yeah I don't want to yeah 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 they are they are scared of the answers and it's and it is hard but doing that kind of soul searching stuff is always worth it because you never know what you might find and it might not be as scary as you think. In fact, it could be amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, so this kind of leads me nicely into the next question I had for Perfect. you um, there. <laughs> so in the article, you mentioned that like, we should find time, basically make time to focus yeah. on happiness as a goal. So we were just touched on the subject of, you know, what if for those people who, don't want to to sit down and seek happiness because of 
you know you have to do a lot of healing I expect a lot of yeah. digging up a lot of you know yeah. going through the wilderness of you know to get to to happiness because there's things that you ultimately have to let go of and there's things that you have to leave behind you and there's things that you have to maybe pick up and bring forward which may not be the easiest thing for someone to do especially if they already feel that you know if they lose a particular thing that they're not happy with you know there's yeah. an attachment then their world's going to crumble they're going to be even worse off than they are now so what would you you know what advice would you have for anyone that's out there that's feeling it that it's really hard for them to actually sit down and think about happiness as a goal as a goal or even consider going after happiness i i think that it needs to be broken down into something smaller because i think that it isn't always to them it probably doesn't feel tangible mm -hmm. they're not they're not going to go i'm, I'm going to go from feeling like you know my whole world has kind of stopped caved in whatever has happened to to over here I, I need I need to find one thing and what it could be is it could be looking for the evidence this is something that I like to talk about quite a lot where you know that it's possible so whether it's you've seen it happen to somebody that you know mm. and they've gone from you know this horrible messy place for me I had a friend who I would say is a couple of years ahead of me on her settling down and getting her life sorted out type of a journey yeah. I saw her marriage break down a couple of years before mine. And then she went on this amazing, like, you know, it was like this for a while and then it went up and, and I was just like, I want that. <laughs> and it just helps you to think if, if she can do it, I can do and well do it. it. Yeah. And yeah. so sometimes it's just, just knowing that it's possible and seeing how it has happened for somebody else. It's never going to be the same journey for two people ever, mm. but just to see that there is some window or like a glimmer of hope of a change. And quite often it'll just be one small change that you need to make at the moment. Doesn't matter actually how small it is. What it is is that you're looking and focusing on making that change. And that that little change then, because in, you're going in a slightly different direction than you were because you've made a little change, something else will then change so it's really not so much about focusing on the very end I want to be happy because sometimes you might just get caught up in that so much that you won't even realize when you are there yeah yeah so you'd say basically next thing so it's look for evidence that yeah. you're seeking exists start yeah. small and enjoy mm -hmm enjoy when yeah. you get there know when you enjoy get the there journey it. yeah yeah it's a it's um a journey not a destination i like that that's a quote from somewhere i think happiness is a journey not a destination yeah, yeah. okay fantastic and so <laughs> i mean you spoke to me about skipping which really threw me <laughs> sorry no, if, I saw, me, if i saw that someone is. skipping down the street then i will know exactly what they're up to so i actually thank you for that learning because now i probably won't be thinking she's crazy i'll probably think wow oh, isn't she happy isn't she brave <laughs> <That's it. laughs> so you've changed my frame of mind around that so no, i love that <laughs> very much. but um you know what's your feeling of happiness is that something you can share with us here today yeah i for me it's kind of when you whatever you see you have a view of it that feels nice and feels good and feels like warm and fuzzy. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a bit of a down day, you might look at, it doesn't matter who it is, you might look at them and find something to nitpick over. But when you're truly calm and settled, grounded and happy in yourself, yeah, that stuff floats away. So you're not focusing on any negative thing whether it be somebody's attitude whether it be a situation you can always find a way to see the good in that I totally understand where you're coming from I'm making notes of that because as you know I can just imagine that whilst we know these things we mm -hmm. slip right and we can just regress back into it because it will just take anything doesn't matter how small it is if you if you're already 
polluting yourself with negative thoughts and seeing the negatives it just takes one little thing to kind of tip you over and then you're like a time bomb that's gone off it's somebody who's like chewing their food a little bit different or the parting exactly. on their hair is not the way you said it was good yeah so you know it's good to sort of sit back and and mellow on that for a little bit because, it's an observation yeah, yeah you make the observation and then you just go that's okay that's you know it's, it's not it's nothing it's it's not even really anything to do with me usually <laughs> or you mind your own business in the pursuit of happiness right and then <laughs> that way nothing exactly exactly <laughs> you've got your vision for your for you know your happiness your goal so you won't have time or you shouldn't have time to be focused no, that's right yeah, yeah exactly brilliant um so you mentioned before you did mention you know a few things like look for evidence and mm -hmm. start small so you know in the article it says there are fundamental things you can do to support you know the, the pursuit of happiness or our pursuit of happiness so whilst we touched on the fact that it's going to be different for everybody you know mm -hmm. maybe there's no two people that's ever going to be the same doesn't matter how much millions or billion people are on the planet yeah the for happiness but is there any other systems or techniques that you know we can use to identify those fundamentals that you've come across or yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's quite funny, really, because one of the things I've just started in the last few days, I think it was Thursday I started it. And um, I had a conversation with one of the ladies in my Facebook group and she said she was really struggling to find anything to be positive about. So I said, how would you like a daily gratitude prompt? And when we talk about gratitude, so it's one of those things where it helps you to connect with a positive thought or feeling. And you can do it in a journal, so you can write it in a notebook where you just write all the things you have to be thankful for. But sometimes even doing that doesn't trigger those feelings. So you might do it as like a, a bit robotically. And I'm really thankful that I, you know, I have a comfortable bed to sleep in. I have a roof over my head. I have a cup of coffee. We still take those things for granted. Yep. Yep. Because we still have them. So if you don't really connect with that energy. That's yeah. how I feel anyway. I've, I've done this for a long time and there are some days I write it and I think, yeah, it's just words. It doesn't really feel like anything, but I still do it anyway. At least you're honest. But, yeah, and uh, that's one of my things. I, I wouldn't ever, you know, um, talk rubbish and then go and do the complete opposite. <laughs> um, so one of the things I started doing is this daily gratitude prompt, but it's been things like reminding you of emotions that made you feel good. So um, talk about a book that you've loved reading and why did you love reading it? Mm. Talk about um, one of the ones that I did that I really enjoyed talking about was actually colour. So what colour just makes you feel good and why? And then you really look at that, like, is it yellow because it reminds you of the sunshine and it makes you feel warm and it makes you feel happy? Or is it something else because it brings up another lovely memory and you can just keep working on things that then they kind of mean something more to you rather than I'm really thankful for the fact that you know I opened my eyes this morning it is something to be thankful for there's no question about it but we still take it for granted that's very, and I think true. yeah and I and I think that it's the way that I'm doing this gratitude um, thing at the moment is I'm doing it on my Facebook page, but I've started sharing it into some of the other groups that I'm a member in. I've had some fascinating responses and it's really triggered some lovely conversations and people have started talking about when they used to read Enid Blyton as a child and, you know, all of these kind of things. And they're conversations you wouldn't even normally have with somebody. That's so I, I'm just, yeah, I'm finding, I'm finding that really good. So that's one. Um, another one is quite a simple one if you can find an activity so whether it's skipping um one of the things that I actually do um in another part of my business is I'm a manager of a tuneless choir and our tagline is we sing like no one's listening so it's all about singing for pure enjoyment so for example you might be in the kitchen and a song comes on that you like instead of just thinking I like that song you just start singing along it doesn't matter whether you can sing or not you just get going and it just lifts lifts your mood puts you in a better place 
I can see you smiling. <laughs> yeah, because I'm thinking, I'm thinking my neighbours might beg to differ when, <laughs> when they're well, trust, or not. trust me, we had um, many singing sessions on Zoom during lockdown. I'm sure my neighbours are, yeah, they probably think I'm completely like a Fruit Loop, but it's fine. We had a nice time. <laughs> <laughs> well look thank you so much for sharing so we had you know journaling maybe one of those things but yeah possibly connecting it to something that you know an emotional emotion no, rather emotion. than yeah. you know a cup of tea waking up the sun shining all that sort of stuff connecting so connecting with it essentially yeah and yeah an activity that you you like because you know you don't have to be the best at it you have to be perfect no. but because you like doing it pick that stick to it and that's something that's going to bring towards happiness but um just wanted to touch on one point so you touched on you know even if it's a color um yeah. that makes you happy why would that make you happy and I want to ask you what color makes you happy I love pink I'm a pinky purpley kind of girl and um I don't really really know why actually but I've just always loved those colors proper girly colors because I'm a proper girly <laughs> so that's, that's probably why those colors make me feel like me so instantaneous happiness when it comes yeah. to, to pink and purple. yeah I actually had a few years ago I had a, a color um, consultation in terms of what colors work for me in my natural coloring and what yeah. colors I should wear that bring out the best color in me and I, I swear to you, before I had this consultation, I actually said, if this woman tells me I can't wear pink, I'm not talking to her. <laughs> and what do you think happened? What do you think happened? She actually turned around and said, um, yeah, I'm sorry, but pink isn't pink a good colour. <laughs> so now I'm like, OK, but purple's good. Purple I can do. So I wear more purple. I'm not wearing it today, but I wear more purple. <laughs> OK, so it sort of worked out for you. You kind of took on what you've heard that pink is not your thing but yeah. <laughs> but purple but just because you can't you know you've been told not to wear it doesn't mean you can't surround yourself with it exactly you know, right? exactly you can dress the house yeah. in it basically exactly. yeah 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 i've got a hot pink wall in my bedroom and everything <laughs> <laughs> well that's one way of getting close to it <laughs> oh fantastic okay so um so we know that happiness can also be elusive sometimes mm. So, you know, mm. you rightly mentioned that in the article as, as well. And I've noticed that you've dropped some little anecdotes, like some little tips, hints and tips of, you know, how we can remind ourselves that we deserve happiness because saying that we deserve happiness and actually connecting with that thought, there's like a big disconnect between that yeah. because life doesn't really allow a lot of the time um space for you to sit down and think oh I, I deserve happiness and so you have to really carve that time out which we touched on before you have to make it a priority so can you just tell us about some of those anecdotes that you you know you mentioned sure. in the article absolutely so um one of the things that when I started this work one of the things that I really needed to work on was it was feel good stuff it was actually trying to find things that made me feel good so I would write down positive messages, affirmations, if you like, yeah. to myself. And it would be, you know, I live an abundantly happy life or I wake up every day with a smile on my face, even if I was actually waking up every day feeling awful. Right. I still had this message. And what I did was I had several post-it notes and they were dotted about the house. So I would have one that is still there now in my bathroom cabinet from about five years ago. Um, on my kitchen cupboard, in my notebooks, screensaver on my phone. And I had these positive messages. And then I would set an alarm sort of a couple of times a day and just sit and read that message. And even if for probably a few days at least, I'd read it and go, mm. <laughs> carry on with what I was doing. <laughs> because to be honest, you do. When you're feeling like that, you do. And I would read it. I would do that. I would go about and just carry on and carry on and keep reading it. So it's something that um, I kind of refer to as fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even when you don't believe it, you still keep doing the thing yeah. until eventually it becomes more of a second nature. And you think, actually, I did wake up this morning with a smile on my face. Actually, I do feel like I'm really looking forward to the future. And you start to think, oh, OK. So what, what you're really doing is you're reprogramming 
your subconscious thoughts to be something more positive than, you know, this sucks, I hate it. <laughs> Which uh, might, you know, might be where you start off, quite honestly. Yeah, it may be, it, it may be where you start off. Like we said, this, you know, this is this is an individual journey. No, no two people are going to mm-hmm. start in the same place. Mm-hmm. Or if they do, they're not going to state the same first steps, right? So it's good to remember that we are all unique in our own pursuit of happiness and yes whilst you might see that someone happiness looks like that and you may want that your journey towards that may be completely different and when you get there there may just be another little twist on it but something that's you know extra spice that's just for you that's just for your taste so that's kind of something to also remember right so Look, you've shared some really fantastic stuff with us today, but I'm just going to ask one little favour of you. So for our viewers who likes a bit of summary, could you just sum up for us today just the whole, you know, the whole conversation in the pursuit of happiness, you know, the pointers that you gave, um, what happiness may look like, things that you can do in your pursuit of happiness? Sure. So um, the first thing I would say is remember that it's never a straight line. Your journey is never going to be A to B. There are going to be bumps in the road. But if you keep focused, you know, if you pick maybe three things that ultimately you want to feel and you do whatever you can throughout your day and your week to find a way to feel those things and keep focused on that, then hopefully the bumps in the road will be less. And you will be able to stay engaged with just that feeling of I am there. It's, you know, I can see the end goal because when you lose sight of that, that's when it becomes trickier. So try and find your own little ways to keep looking forward. Brilliant. Thank you so, so much for sharing. And finally, you mentioned this, but I'm going to ask you anyway, because I wanted to ask you happiness is it a goal, a journey, or a destination? Happiness is a journey with um, a destination that you can look forward to in your own way. Okay, so you've touched on that. You've kind of sandwiched that. So it starts off as a journey. In between is all the stuff that happens, the goals you maybe need to set to get there. And then, you know, we close that sandwich with the destination. If that's it. Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> happiness so- sandwich, huh? <laughs> Thank you so, so, so much for sharing with us here today. Um, It's just been wonderful actually talking to you. You've got a really bubbly personality and I really appreciate that. That's fantastic. So um, I really enjoyed that. Thank thank you. you. So for more information from Motivate Magazine or if you'd like to gain access to more superb articles, you can become a subscribed member. Just visit us at motivatemagazine.com. So that's Mo, M-O, the number two, Vait, V-A-T-E, magazine.com and hit subscribe. And also, if you're looking for that sense of community, you can join the Facebook group. Um, Just go into Facebook and search for Motivate Magazine. And there's still Mo, M-O, the number two, V-A-T-E, magazine, and just click join and I'll see you there. So thank you so much, Jacqueline. Thank you very much. Thank you.